Hello and welcome back guys, this is 1920 Gaming, this is FIFA 20 Career Mode. We're back with another episode of the Kilmarnock Manager's Journey. It's a big one today, uh, coming off the back of a couple of wins in the Europa League and a 2-1 win over St Johnston. We've got Livingston today coming up, uh, we've got Deadline Day coming up, we've also got the Europa League and the Champions League draws that have happened. So it is a big one today, really looking forward to getting into it. Hope you are too, and before we do jump into it, I just want to say thanks again for your time. Thanks for being here, it means so, so much to me. And with all that being said, let's now get into the episode. So before anything else, we're just going to take a look at the notifications. And as you can see there, we've got rescheduled games, which just goes to confirm what I was on about earlier. And there we've got the prize money for qualifying for the Europa League. Again, another thing I was on about earlier. Those things being that we did qualify for Europe and that uh, it has now been drawn. So we will take a look at the draw for both the Champions League and the Europa League in just a second. But before that, there's a quick brief look. We're not going to look into much uh, depth, but we are at the moment sitting joint top of the league. And... Um, yeah, it doesn't mean too much, like I say, at this point, but it is nice to be there all the same. As you can see, we are undefeated, just like Celtic. Uh, we've had exactly the same start to the season, and we've also got one of the old firm games out of the way. So, at the moment, in our league, things are going very, very well. Um, the Champions League now, um, Group A, looks quite a tough one. You've got Real Madrid, Inter, Benfica, and Zagreb. And I've just gone and pressed the wrong button. So we'll go back into that again. That is a pretty tough group. You would say that the favourites are definitely Real Madrid and Inter. Uh, but Benfica are not a side to be written off. So who knows. Um, group B there. You had Spurs in there. Group C, Dortmund, Galatasaray. Group D looks quite tough as well. Um, group E, City, Bayern, Marseille and Moscow. Another tough group. It just goes to show this that uh, as we're going through them, you can pause them obviously and take a look uh, in more depth. But the, you can see there there is no easy um, teams there in the Champions League. It is a really tough competition. And as we'll take it from the bottom, you've got Wolves, Schalke, have no idea how to tie the third team, and Legia Warsaw, that's quite a tough group there. Uh, Gladbach, Braga, Ball, and FCSB, who I have no idea who they are. But I would say probably Ball and Gladbach in that group. Leon, Liège, uh, yeah, there's one of them teams there, again, that I couldn't pronounce. Again, just like the Champions League, if I'm going too quick, uh, like I am for myself, you can pause it and obviously look in closer depth. Rangers have drawn a really tough group there, I noticed. Um, as is Copen, uh, Copenhagen or Copenhagen, however you want to say that. Fenerbahce and Lille, that's tough in its own right, considering where we are in our development at the moment. And then the Sevilla United, they, you would say, would qualify from that group. Celtic have got Cluj, Sporting and Atalanta. Again, quite a tough group there, but I think Celtic would be disappointed to not make it through there. And we've got Athletic Club, Ghent, uh, another couple of teams in there. And then finishing off Everton, Besiktas, Braha and Mulder. You would think probably Besiktas and Everton are going to go through that one. So that's how things have been drawn in Europe. Um, I'm quite thankful having gone through the Champions League that we're not there just yet. That looks really tough, that. Um, but for now, we've got to turn our focus back to our domestic uh, competitions. Just before the Livingston game, we've got Lewis knocking on the door telling me that he wants to play. Which is a good thing. Uh, whether he will or not, I don't know because uh, I'm thinking that we've got to keep our momentum, keep our focus and we've got to go as strong as we possibly can against Livingston. Um, I'm not too sure when the games that come up after Livingston are. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure when I did check, uh, I remember I think we had Celtic next. But um, that being said, again, we're not going to take anyone lightly. So we're going to put the team together for this game now. And Ince is going to come in for the tired Campbell. 
Um, Thomas is probably going to have to play, even though he's got a bit of stamina missing. Um, Parrot looks alright to stay there. Lewis has come in like he wanted to, um, which was good timing, actually. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go Parrot, Ince, Lewis, Thomas, Yearwood, Tonali, uh, Valenzuela, Acore, Robinson, O'Donnell, and Koprovec. Oh, Koprovec in goal. Um, so, yeah, there's only the one rotation, and that is that Lewis comes in like he asked. So, we'll see how he gets on and how we get on in this game right now. Okay then, so here we go, we are at home, so I'm expecting a good performance today. Uh, both sides lining up with a 4-2-3-1, so I'm expecting the midfield to be a real um, attritional battle in there, there's not going to be a lot of room. Uh, majority of both teams are going to be through the centre, so yeah, it's going to be tough today. Um, Parrot kicking us off, I'm hoping for a goal from him today, he's had a really slow start to the season if I remember rightly. Um, yeah, I'll say it as I, if I remember rightly because I've not played this or any other game in quite a while. Um, so it could with the sliders. I'm a bit nervous, I ain't going to lie. Um, we'll see how we get on though. Uh, it is going to be tough against these today. Um, for some reason, we're still getting that bloody glitching thing going on with the recording. I don't know what the hell is causing that, but it is really, really annoying at the moment. We could get Parrot through here, though, back onto matters on the pitch. It is whack clear, though, by Livingston. Uh, being away from home, I am expecting them probably to sit deep today, uh, make it really difficult for us. Uh, hopefully, with the signings that we've made and the start to the season that we have made, though, we should be able to pick our way through. We could be in here already, Yearwood has to hit that, for some reason he doesn't, he goes for Ince with a back heel, we've still got a chance here though, eventually Livingston block it and bring it clear, uh, Yearwood should really have been hitting that with his left foot I think, I'm really surprised that he didn't, and uh, now Livingston can come and bring this ball away, I'm expecting the cross maybe to come in here or not, they've gone a different way about it, which is refreshing to see, is that the sliders at work again, maybe, oh my god, we're 1-0 down, oh wow, what an absolutely terrible start that is, that is literally their first attack of the game, the defender looked like he was really more hungry for it than our centre back there, which is really disappointing, we gave him so much room to make the cross, and yep, he gets in front, he just attacks him before Miles gets off the ground. 
He'll get a better angle of it here. He seemed to just nudge him out the way. He was more hungry. He wanted that a lot more. And he got his rewards. And we find ourselves 1-0 down already. That is a terrible, terrible start. Especially at home as well. I've been itching to play this game for so long now. Um, yeah, and it's just started really badly. Um, we're going to have to pick ourselves up now. Try and get a pretty quick response. And yeah, it's going to be tough because I did just say I was expecting them to sit deep and compact and make it difficult. Well, now they've got the goal that was unlucky there from Lewis. Um, not to be able to get Parrot in there. The real idea was good, but yeah, they're really going to sit in now, and this is going to turn into a really tough game for us, I feel. Uh, in games like this, where they are playing a narrow, compact formation, and you think they're going to sit at the back, ideally you like to get the first goal. But um, that's not the case today, and um, we've got to figure something out now. We've just got halfway into the first half, pretty much, and we ain't really done anything yet at all, but we could get in here with Thomas. He's got a lot of room to work with here. He's got runners all over the place as well. And his final ball's terrible. You would manage to pick it up for us though. Just composed ball back to Tonali there. Just to keep the possession. Keep the uh, ball moving. Keep the attack going. But it is proving really difficult to break this barrier down at the moment. There's a nice switch of play there. Maybe that can unlock something for us. We've moved the ball pretty quick and pretty nice here. And it comes to nothing in the end. Have we even had a shot at the goal at the moment? Because I don't think we have. Um, and considering the way we started this season off, I know I've had a bit of a break and a little bit rusty. But um, yeah, the way we started playing this season, it's really surprising that we've not managed to at least get a shot at goal yet. And uh, it's got to be frustrating as hell for the fans at home as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can pick ourselves up and uh, just try and get a bit more urgency into our game at the moment. That is a brilliant bit of play there all the way around. It's Parrot now in front of goal and we are 1-1. Well, we needed that. We really needed a lift there because this has been a really... It's been a dire first half to watch. And be a part of. I don't remember the game being quite this bad. Um, it's surprising how different it is when you just sit back and watch it. But um, considering Parrot's not scored at the moment. Hopefully that will get him up and running now. Passes it calmly into the net. Just out the reach of the keeper. I think the keeper could probably in honesty have done a little bit better there. But I for one I'm glad that he didn't. And we find ourselves right back in this game now. Just keep doing what we're doing. Need to have a few more shots, obviously. Uh, create a few more chances. But um, they have only had that one attack at the moment. So, yeah, if we can keep that solid and go ahead and get another goal, I think that'll be enough to win this game. And, yeah, we've just got to go and do it. And we've been trying and trying and trying, guys, to really go ahead and press them um, into a mistake or something like that. But it's been tough. They've been really, really good defensively. Um, I am liking how difficult it is at the moment. Uh, I've had to cut quite a bit of the game out just because um, the recording, the jumping and the skipping has been really, really bad. Um, but yeah, it seemed to have calmed down at the moment. Hopefully it stays that way. Uh, as you can see here, this has been the pattern of the game. We've been really trying to move the ball to get wide or just try something to break these down. But they have been really good, uh, really solid. It's been tough. Um, they've not threatened us at all. They've still not managed another shot on goal themselves yet. We've won that in a good place there. And that is a great ball through to Ince. Come on now, Ince, do something. The step over is a nice. He's got Lewis in the box, but he doesn't need him. It's 2-1. Tom Ince to the rescue again. What a start to the season this boy's been having. I'm really glad that we picked him up. In games like this, um, where it is tough, it is tight, it's a real battle. Uh, you look to your top players, and this guy is by far and away our top earner. And then he goes and pulls something like that out of the bag, and that's why he is our top earner. Like I say, he's had a really good start to the season. That's his fourth in four or five games. Um, he has got a couple in Europe as well. So, yeah, he's on fire at the moment. 
a uh, really good pickup he was uh, again first time I've used him and really really happy with him he's in a different position today so he struggled to affect the game as much as he normally would um, but he still he needed one moment and he made it count and all we've got to do now is just carry on what we've been doing the whole game just keep possession of the ball and now can we run into the space Troy's just made there that's a real good run off the ball but unfortunately Ince just didn't have the pace to get away there really intelligent run now from Parrot to create the space for him uh, it's good to see him doing stuff like that um, now we have got the goal what we don't want to be doing is letting these back in like this that is a good good save from the keeper there uh, can't prevent there he hasn't been called upon really at all in this game even though we've conceded but uh, that was a big moment there that save that was important as important to me as the goal that we scored just because the pattern that this game's gone in can we get away now and just put it to bed we can't uh, if Thomas had have managed to beat his man there maybe he could have slipped Parrot in instead we could be in trouble here it's a good block from Akore but they've got it back again we just can't get out at the minute where the hell has this come from because they've not been doing this the whole game can our left back uh, bring it away now he can't either what the hell is going on let's just get the ball away uh, it's another good save it ends up in the keeper's hands there he's threw it out and we're just about can we bring it away now uh, I thought Parrot maybe could have sent Ince away but he didn't and we just calm it back down now that was a real nerve wracking 5 or 10 minutes there best spell of the game for Livingston by a long way and this is what we have been doing all game and what we have been good at and that is retaining the possession we've actually been good at that all season which is a massive step forward considering to when I first came and we couldn't put three or four passes together it just shows um, the difference a season makes can Tonali hit one here now? no it's just game management by the looks of it at the moment we've got just a few minutes of the game left and then we're going to be getting into deadline day which I'm quite excited about um, not too sure what we're going to be doing there yet we've got to see the end of this game out first before we turn our attention to that though we get uh, lucky there because they do get the interception but it comes straight back out to us and now it's us that have got them pinned in Yearwood's had a good game today uh, he's really coming into his own uh, at the moment which is good to see Ince there off 40 sent Lewis away there but he went on himself couldn't get the shot away though and that's what they have been good at doing uh, he's stopping us getting a good look at goal uh, in this game they have been really really good at that Livingston and oh, this year, I've got a bad feeling about this here they are right in now uh, that's good work there though from McCorey and he's calm enough to just pass it back out as well we're just a minute left now we don't need to be silly and go and look for another goal we've just got to be smart keep hold of the ball there is a little run for Ince there but again he just doesn't quite have the legs to get there uh, surely they're not going to have time for another attack now great work there from Yearwood again and there we go we edge out Livingston at home for a 2-1 win the maiders were bloody hard for that one though um, it, yeah uh, I've been away from FIFA for about a week a week and a half playing picked the pad back up today um, and Jesus yeah I'm gonna have to play a few more probably to get back into rhythm because um, that was tough that was really really tough I thought we'd get the win today but I thought it would be a lot more comfortable than that but uh, yeah we've got the job done it's a 2-1 win uh, we keep the winning momentum going still unbeaten still really strong at home and now it's time to turn our attention to deadline day and here we go then um, what to do what to do with deadline day first before anything else we'll just say uh, um, stay grounded to Lewis because he got the game he wanted and now um, for as for deadline day the rest of the squad and the team and things like that um, you can see there the budget that we have got we've got 1.3 mil to spend but we don't need 97k on the wage budget so we can make alterations there we're not paying anyone anywhere near that kind of money at the moment our top earner as I said is Ince and if memory serves 
I think he himself is only on 11k and there is a big difference between him and the rest of the squad so we need nowhere near 97k we probably need 10 20 maybe um, but looking at the team it's like what do we want to do here um, we're stacked I think our defense at the moment is all right we're not stacked with big big talent um, when it comes to squad depth there but the first team defence I am more than happy with now. Um, midfield, we do seem okay in the middle. I mean, we've got options because we've, we've got Tonali, Yearwood, um, Wilson. We've got Ince at Cam. Um, we've got Power. We've got Dicker. So we've got numbers there. But one thing that we do have to keep an eye on is the fact that um, Power and Dicker are ageing. I don't want to get rid of them um, because they were so, so strong for us last season. Um, and they are good options to come off the bench. They're more than capable in this division. So um, the areas I think we could do with is one more striker. But a way that we could get a striker without spending any money is to bring in a couple of wingers. Um, because then we can use uh, Campbell. Uh, what I bought him for um, which is obviously to play up front and he's not had a chance to do that yet which is a bit like I do want to see what he's like up there and also the other area that we do need to look at is what I'm looking at now is goalkeeper um, we've got two keepers but I'm not overly happy with either option that we've got there and I would love to sign a young keeper. And there is actually one for free that we're looking at at the moment. Uh, one that probably won't come in straight away. But one that we can train and get him to a lot higher a level. Um, because I am happy with the back four. But um, when it comes to the back five I'm like. Uh, uh, have we even got enough to get out of the Europa League group stage. When we look at the keeper as well. I don't know. So um, yeah we're going to try and adjust that now by bringing in a young keeper a uh, free agent we have sent our scouts out to look at him as well and as you can see there um, we've got an absolute bargain I know it's not the most exciting of signings like wow well, we've got a keeper off the free agents list but it's needs must at the moment with where the club's at and I'm thinking that maybe um, we look again at centre mid um just because, like I said, we've got Dicker, we've got um, Power, but they're both, I remember looking last season, they're both into their 30s. Um, so we have really got to keep an eye on that. And we have got a young Spanish keeper, um, Spanish keeper, Spanish midfielder here. Um, again, just for squad depth, um, he fits into uh, what we're trying to do, a business model, if you like. Of getting young players in, um, raising their overalls up, keep them at the club for a two, maybe three seasons, um, and then sell them on. Um, so we've got another one who fits into that model here, and this is just purely about numbers. Um, we've got a lot more games this season than we had last season because of the Europa League. And if we do somehow get out the group stage as well, there could be points where we do run into a bit of fixture congestion. So we have got to be prepared for that. Uh, we want to be proactive rather than reactive. This guy here has said he will accept a prospect role. We're going to offer him the five years. He's taken that as well, which is great stuff. Doesn't want a release clause, which is absolutely fine by me. And he'll sign for £450 a week, which is absolutely nothing. So... That's again not a great exciting signing but it's one that needed to be made and now we can turn our attention to either striker or uh, wingers. And one thing that I do I did notice just is when Campbell does run out of a bit of stamina we've had to put Ince out there and he just was as not as effective as he is at Cam. Because um, he doesn't have the pace, uh, that's one thing that we're really lacking at the moment in this team is pace. But with the signings that we've made, we'll just move things about now and get a clearer picture of where we are. Because obviously now, if something did happen to Kotprovec, um, our keeper as you can see there, McKay, our sub-keeper, 
he's 53 rated guys it's not good enough um there's we got a keeper here who's 18 years old and already better than him and now we've got another option in midfield as well uh, for when uh, either dicker power goals someone gets injured something like that we've got numbers now so i feel a little bit more confident with a midfield feel better with a goalkeeping situation we can jump straight on that as soon as we get days where we can train um we're looking now at campbell and thomas um i don't want to drop thomas because he performs a lot better than his overall says he is but I do want to give Campbell a go up front, but I just cannot do it yet because we don't have enough players in the right positions to do that. And if we can, we've then got 73 rated Parrot. We'd have a 71 rated um, sub as well, uh, depending which way around they play in different games. Then we can drop Cameron to reserves or even keep him on the bench as a different kind of option because he's taller and stronger where the other two are a bit quicker than him. So if we do move the budget now, as you can see, um, to what our wage structure is at the moment, it actually leaves us with four and a half mil, was that, I think, rather than the million that we've got. So if we are going to look at wingers, I would love to use Ansu Fati. I would absolutely love to use him. But there's no way that we can afford him from Barca. You can see his money there. We just can't afford it, so forget about that one. We sent the scouts out to Ryan Kent, um, but obviously he's still at range, so I'll forget about that one. And it really leaves us with Hazard here, Killian Hazard, and Seidorf. Um As you can see, we couldn't even afford Kent if we wanted him. Um, but yeah, really, realistically, we're looking at Seidorf here and Hazard. Um... Seidorf would need a lot of training uh, technically but he's a good athlete and he comes with natural pace that we don't have at the moment so that would be a big boost to us and you've got Hazard here as well who in both ways fits into our structure but he's a little bit older and it's resale value we're looking at that is our strategy at the minute he doesn't really fit into that, but on the flip side, he would definitely improve the first team. So, um, you have to look at it both ways, I suppose. And realistically, off this list, I mean, we can't afford his wages. Um, we can't even afford his transfer fee. And that is the same for a lot of the players on this list at the moment. Some are in there, like I said before, for a few seasons down the line. Uh, we are in the Europa League remember so maybe we'll get some more finance for that um, this season as well um, but at the moment we can only dream of having some of these players I'd love to bring Barco to the team as well uh, but again we cannot afford it at the moment so having exhausted all options like I say is down to side off at uh, side off and Hazard uh, realistically um, so really it's about making an offer for one of these two uh everything to me says hazard it's just natural he's the better player um but again yeah i know it's like going over it again but as much as i would love to have him i mean four star skill moves four star weak foot he would be brilliant for us i mean i don't skill anyway but the yeah the potential to do it is there with him it'd be quite easy and the same with has um the same as hazard we say it off they are both four star weak foot which would be brilliant uh it's just really we've got to stick to what we're doing we've got a strategy here so um as much as i keep looking at hazard when it comes to i mean look at it he's an absolute bargain but then you look at him and he's even more of a bargain um He's 64 rated now. We could easily get him to mid 70s, probably. Hazard's already in the 70s, but I still think he'd only reach probably 77, 78, maybe. Um, so yeah, again, you're looking at resale value, and I think there's a lot more of that inside off. So uh, we need to stop being indecisive here. Um, it's been flicking through my head as we was going through the Livingston game. Uh, cause I did have a look at this shortlist before that game 
And I knew it was down to these two, but in the back of my mind, I was like, which one do I get? Which one do I actually want? And again, um, we look at Kent. I don't exactly know why I did that, to be honest, and Fatty. But it is down to these two. And uh, I think we've got a goal side off. I really think we've got a goal side off, just for the sake of our strategy. Um, to be clear, Hazard's the one that I want, clearly, but Seidorf's the one that fits into our project at the moment. Um, we're having a look again, because uh, I was considering trying to bring in both, but I don't think financially that we can do that. Um, I can't remember offhand whether we did do that or not. Uh, if we did and we was to do that it would be a shame uh, for Thomas uh, it'd be a bit unfair on him as well uh, that's what I'm thinking now but what I thought when I was actually playing this guys is a complete and utter different thing probably um, right here we go again I think it's got to be said off he has to be at least the first option just because he fits into what we're trying to do here and that is my thoughts now, and it's clearly what my thoughts was then as well. So, yeah, we're going to sit down. We're going to try and get this done for as cheap as we possibly can. Uh, we're not absolutely flush with money, obviously. I did spend a lot at the end of last season, beginning of this season. So, um, yeah, we're going to do what we can do here. Yeah, let's see what we're getting for. Again, I'm being genuine with you. I have no idea how this negotiation went. Um, but yeah, if I'm thinking with the head that I've got on right now, we will go in as cheap as possible, and that's exactly what we've done. So we're going in with 550. What do we reckon? I think it's going to be a lot more closer to his value than that, but it was worth a try. And there you go, uh, bang on his value. But we're going to try and remove that sell on clause. I don't like those as much as I don't like the buyout clauses in player contracts. And we're going to offer his value and see what he says to that one. Then you can, you know, you want to do this. Come on, seven hundred. It's bang on his value. It's fair. But he wants nearly a million. I don't remember that at all. That is tough negotiation there from Motherwell. Um, I know what I said about Kent about weakening um, opponents, by the way, like rivals, but um, with all due respect to Motherwell, um, I don't, even though they are tough to play against, I don't really class them as a rival, a direct rival like the old firm are, so I don't feel bad about doing this one at all. And we have come down to 800k there, by the way, and he hasn't accepted it. He's actually gone away and thought about it. Wow. It's been a while since that's happened. So, um, do we try Hazard now, maybe? Um, we would actually, I think, if they would accept that 800k, I think we'd still have the money for him, but... Ah, uh, yeah, that it's been a while. That shocked me. I, I'm so used to things going just straight through uh, in one sitting, but clearly he was having none of that. And he's now come back, and he still wants nearly a million. We, I don't want to pay that for him, guys. I'll, that's well over the odds, in my view. Again, as I sit here now, and I'm pretty sure I would have been thinking it then as well. Um... I'm still thinking about not just paying the money to get him, but the resale value down the road. If they rinse us here, um, yeah, that resale value, it, it might not be as much as I would like profit-wise when we come to sell him. But in the end, we got him for 850k. I think that's fair. Um, it's a lot better than 930 that they were after. So all we got to do now is just get him to agree as well. He wants an important squad role, which um, is fine because he would free up, like I said, Campbell, which means we can give him importance and we can play him in quite a few games. Um, so that's not much of an issue, really. Um, he's signed for the five years as well, which is good. 
again he didn't want a release clause he wants 1.3 uh, on his wages which well, to me is fine we get rid of the bonus and he's still willing to accept that so all round that's a good deal I'm happy with that one uh, it has finally gone through after the negotiation stalled for a little bit so we can put him in now and again build a clearer picture of the finished article at the moment um, so we're going to have him out on the left, uh, Campbell could go out on the right, that leaves us with a winger on the bench, um, we still got to put, um, yeah we've swapped the keeper around, that's a good idea, <laughs> um, and that's what we're looking like at the moment, now the question is do we go and get Hazard? Um, <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. Do we get Hazard? Do we need to now? We've got um, Thomas on the bench. We, we've still got Campbell. Uh, we're not going to be selling O'Donnell. Uh, uh, quite a few teams have come in for him at the moment, but I've got no interest in selling him. I don't want to rebuild the defence at the moment. We're trying to get other areas of the team right, so... There's no value in selling any defenders at the moment. Um, and again, Hazard, uh, I really, as you can tell, do want to sign him. But, um, yeah, it's going to be tight whether we could even get him or not. Um, I do want to use Antu as well. I'd like to use Kent, but I'm not going to be tempted into weakening Rangers. Um if they did it themselves, then there's obviously I can't control that, but I'm not going to be actively weakening them. Uh, obviously, we can't leave this alone at the moment. Um, we are looking at Ansu, uh, but obviously there's no way we could afford him. Well, we couldn't afford his transfer fee, but I suppose what I was thinking there is if we can split the wages well enough, then maybe, just maybe, we could get him through the door. And his rep looks scarily like our chairman, does he not? Uh, that's a bit weird. But yeah, can we get Ansu Fati through the door? We are in the Europa League, so we'd have more chance than normal. Uh, we can only go for the year and not the two, which is a bit disappointing. And they are willing to let us do that. He would be at the moment. They want 60-40 on the wages, which I'm not willing to do. Uh, 8.6 would be fine, 55, 45, they're a lot richer than us, surely they would do that, wouldn't they? No, they wouldn't, they actually want to go 50-50, which, it's still fine, he would still be up there with um, Tom Ince, he wouldn't, still wouldn't be our highest earner, so I am comfortable doing that, it's not like he's going to be doing that for 5 years either, it would be just for the year, so... Barcelona are fine with it, um, so if Ansu's fine with it, that would save us a transfer fee at the moment while we try and continue to evolve as a club and try and get better players eventually. But he still won't leave Barcelona. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> so that leaves us back to square one. Um, do I or don't I now bring in Hazard? It is literally the only other option that we've got. I suppose we could try and loan him Barco. We probably actually have a pretty good shot at doing that. Um, I don't know, guys. Um, sitting here right now, I would probably leave it at that, to be fair. I would probably try and loan in Barco. Uh, but what I did at the time... Is obviously it looks like I went to try and get Hazard. Um, whether I got him or not is a different thing altogether. Because it would be a real, real tight um, negotiation here. It, they'd have to come down from his value of course. Because we've only got 1.7 left now. And that's if he accepted it at this. Which I don't think that he will to be fair. Uh, no, he wants 3. And already that is leaving us right on the limit for monies. Um, again, 
sitting here now looking at what we've got left I wouldn't be doing this I would probably have walked away from the negotiation but uh, they've accepted it and yes I am going to try and get him apparently um, I personally now looking back watching this as it happens with you guys think that if we sign him now this is a mistake um, hopefully he walks out but uh, it's very rare that I would make that happen once I've gone for someone uh, well we're going for five years but he says he wants two so yeah as everyone does you try and get that extra year out of him he's gone for that We've denied him his release clause and what are we going to do about his wages now because this is going to be right on the bubble as well. It's going to leave us with absolutely nothing in January or uh, if only I could go back and tell myself to walk away from this deal. Is he going to accept? I mean he's shaking his head like he's happy with that. He is happy with that. And for me, guys, uh, I just think we've just made a mistake there. I mean, he could turn out to be a really good player. He's up with the best in the squad. Um, what I would have been thinking of at the time is exactly what I was just thinking, and that is that it's freed up Campbell, which means we don't have to look at another striker. But looking back now, um, I think maybe we could have been a bit more patient, see if anything else came up. But it is what it is, we've done it now, so we've put him on the bench, uh, we've put Campbell on the bench, sorry. We've put Cameron on the bench as well, which I suppose makes sense because we've got two different types of striker on the bench now. Thomas has been dropped, but he's going on the bench as well, which again makes sense. The attacking side of the pitch looks a lot better now, I've got to say that. Um, Dicker has been dropped off the bench. Wow. Why would we drop him off the bench? Lewis has come off the bench as well, which is absolutely fine. Um, but this, guys, this is how the team looks right now. Um, the bottom four have been put at the bottom because I wouldn't mind if they went but yeah we have left ourselves completely and utterly skint and I personally think that that is a mistake that I've just made there uh, we've got a hell of a lot of crucial players on our books now which is uh, quite worrying and actually I've just seen that uh, I remember that now um, power is actually retiring at the end of the season which is an absolute shame. I don't know if I've clocked that before. But I've clocked it now. And I feel really gutted about that. Because I do really like him. Um, that We lost Burke last season. We're losing power this season. And yeah that is a real shame. Um, absolutely gutted about that. Uh, I do like I say. I remember seeing that now. Um, we've got Hendry on the list as well. Um... That is because we brought Walters back off loan and Walters is he's on less of a squad role than Hendry and there's not a lot in the overall. Uh, I do remember sorting that. But yeah, I think now, well, there's no thinking about it. We have no money left now at all. So that is the end of our transfer window for incomings. Outgoings, however, we have got an offer in now for Hendry pretty much straight away. We've only just looked at that and it is for pretty much what his value is anyway. So there's no point really negotiating that. They've offered 430. He's only worth 450 tops. So we'll just accept that. And if he wants to go then he can go. That is absolutely fine. Um, we did put McKay on the transfer list as well. Because there's just no point now. We've got our keeper uh, that we've bought in. Um... Wilson, actually, yeah, he's not going to be going out on loan because of Europa League. Uh, we're not going to be loaning anyone. If anyone leaves the team, it's going to be because we've been offered money for them. Uh, we're not blessed with squad depth at the minute, so uh, there's no way anyone's leaving. 
I do want us to get out of the group phase, as I mentioned earlier, of the Europa League. So we eventually are going to have the Scottish League, um, the Scottish Cup, sorry, starting as well. So there is potential for fixture congestion, which means no one's going to be walking out the door on loan. That is the actual reason why we bought players back off loan last season. Um, so yeah, Hendry's gone now. McKay is on the transfer list. We've got two hours left. Uh, well, I don't think he's going to be going anywhere just now. There wouldn't be time. So that is transfer deadline day over. It's been an eventful one. We've bought in um, a Brazilian goalkeeper. So we followed the Premier League trend there. Uh, we've got our Spanish midfielder coming for free as well. Um, signings that we paid cash for. We managed to bring in... Seidorf and um, Hazard in the end. So we've got four players in. I think only one's left. So squad depth has become better than it was. Um, I'm happy about that. And yeah, it's been an eventful window again. Um, I think we'll leave it here now. Uh, maybe I'll just check what games that we've got. Did I do that? I know I was thinking of doing that. Yes, I did do that. So we've got a bit of a break now in the next episode uh, before we play Celtic. Then our Europa League group phase gets underway. So um, that's quite exciting. We've got Hibs at home as well and Ross County away. So yeah, um, one way or another, we'll try and squeeze all those games into the next episode. We're going into an important period here um, with Celtic and Leo in the Europa League. Uh, if we win both of them, we'll be top or joint top of our Europa League group and outright top of the Scottish League. So, yeah, important episode, the next one. I hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. I've absolutely enjoyed it. Uh, I will see you all in the next one. Hope you're all well and have a great day. Bye-bye, guys.